right so uh, today uh, we have uh, chintan with us and chintan is a is a is an aid partner and it's ngo working in dc uh, sorry in new delhi in india with waste speaker communities and uh, yeah we'll have lakshmi later introduce chintan to us so yeah uh, uh, again the housekeeping rules please mute yourself when not speaking and use the chat feature on zoom to ask questions and place place donations so uh, yeah for people who who uh, are not uh, familiar with aid let me just quickly introduce aid uh, so aid is a us based non profit organization that has been working in the last 29 years in india with grassroots partners across like all this different states of india on various interconnected issues such as education livelihoods environment public health women's empowerment social justice and uh, yeah and, and many of you have been part of the journey of aid for many many years now uh, so i would not take that long uh, to introduce aid but uh, so as you all know that we have a we have a we have a unprecedented crisis uh, in the form of covid-19 pandemic and the lockdown in india and aid has uh, started their covid relief efforts uh, like right as soon like uh, even before the lockdown was started and now we have uh, we have been working with 30 partners across 18 states of india uh, we have already raised around 400000 dollars and disbursed around 300000 and we aimed at least in the in the in the near term uh, to raise around 1 million dollars uh, for covid relief efforts so I'll play a short video about our COVID relief efforts. Uh, uh, I will, yeah, I'll disable the audio of the video, uh, audio in the video to, uh, so that I can speak on the thing. Yeah, so like I said, we have been working with 30 partners in 18 states and our main efforts have been to mitigate the unprecedented hunger crisis that was, that has been rampant in India uh, over the three phases of lockdown now. And uh, we have reached we have reached food uh, to more than 130,000 people across India, uh, including migrant workers stranded in in the cities, uh, all, as well as like uh, marginalized communities in villages of Harkin, West Bengal, Maharashtra, and 18 states uh, in India. We have also been uh, working with partners to uh, distribute personal protective equipments uh, to doctors and uh, primary healthcare centers and to communities who are at the front lines like Safai Sainas and, and sanitation workers. Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said that we have been, we have been, uh, we have started this COVID relief fund, but uh, the need on the ground is, is much, much larger than what uh, we have done till now and what we even plan to do in the near term so i would really urge you to uh look at our efforts and if you are if you're able to con consider donating to our efforts so before i go into uh, i before i hand it over to lakshmi uh to introduce Sintan, i wanted to uh, take you on a tour uh, uh with our about our covid relief efforts and for that you can uh, I, I urge you to go to the aid website so if you click on COVID-19, you'll see uh, the details of our, uh, of our COVID relief efforts and all the latest information will be there. And uh, we have all the different states where uh, we are working. And if you click on any of the states, you will find uh, the, the, the stories uh, about uh, the work of, the, of our partners. So for example, in Delhi, you would find the story about Chintan, uh, who we are supporting and and yeah and all the different states the partners we are working with so you can take a tour across india uh, to learn about uh, about the about our covid relief efforts and you'll also find details about our support including like uh, including the amount of support uh, the, how we are supporting doctors and primary healthcare centers with protective equipments and uh, we also are keeping tabs on the day, state wise daily tests and deaths across india uh, also, I want to point point out to you that uh, as aid, we are hosting online events uh, to stand in solidarity with people on the ground, uh, like this call and several other calls that are uh, that are planned that have been that have been going on in the last few weeks and also this weekend. So you can find all the details of our events by going to our events uh, on on the Aid India website. And just uh, just to uh, let you in that. Uh, 
so today we have two more two more calls. One about uh, the grassroots efforts in West Bengal uh, later in the day, and tomorrow we have uh, have uh, have a webinar on right to health with doctors and health champions across India, uh, a roundtable for uh, with uh, doctors and health champions across India. So please do join in if you are if you are free and if you want to learn more about the ground realities in india so with that uh, yeah i'll just keep this on while i uh, in, uh, invite uh, lakshmi lakshmi gorepati to uh, introduce chintan uh, and ida who will be our speaker today lakshmi can you I mean, yeah you? sure thanks uh, subhan can you hear me yeah yeah we are yeah okay um so if uh, i mean i think one of the slides is about their uh, work so i just want to talk about um uh, very briefly i don't want to take too much time i know everyone is uh, waiting to hear from the chintan team so we met um, you know bharti chaturvedi who was the founder of who is the founder of chintan in 2008 uh, she came here and she gave us a talk and uh, you know inspired and impressed by the work that the chintan team was doing we asked uh, her how aid could also support some of uh, chintan's work um bharti very interestingly said she will uh, in, in, instead of immediately telling us about uh, some of the proposals that we could support she said she will convey our interest back to uh, the base picker team that worked directly with chintan and ask them how best an organization like aid can help in supporting projects that would be most useful to them um so a few months later is when we actually received the proposal and this proposal was to help uh, uh, you know with support uh, uh, basically training and awareness programs for waste pickers on various policy changes that were happening and that were directly impacting their livelihoods uh, for uh, such as the urban uh, renewal mission uh, solid waste rules electronic waste legislation hazardous materials rules and policies related to uh, for instance incineration which is a direct threat to uh, their livelihood because uh waste pickers sort waste and you know they they sell the waste and they uh, that is their livelihood and incineration is like a direct threat to their livelihood um policies related to privatization of waste handling all these were something that they wanted to learn more about and uh, and understand how uh, how they can advocate then uh, by themselves so this was how we started our collaboration with chintan over the years um this project still has evolved to in include other initiatives um but i do want to point out that this is basically just a small part of the work that chintan does and what aid supports but chintan also does several other very interesting initiatives uh, some of which we have listed here um they have a no uh, child in trash program which is very good and very popular um they also uh, uh, you know ensure that uh, you know waste pickers have sustainable livelihoods so one of their very um, successful uh, programs is with uh, you know waste uh, recycling in the new delhi railway, railway station and the trains that come uh, to the new delhi ra railway station um, and that is a very uh, interesting program that is that has sort of become like a pilot that can be uh, uh, you know replicated in other places as well um, so these are some of the uh, very high level uh, uh, you know uh, the things that chintan does very interesting programs um, and as soon as the lockdown was in, you know uh, announced uh, chintan jumped into uh, supporting the um, sort of supporting the waste picker families immediately um, and uh, i reached out to them seeing one of their posters you know how can aid help and you know we we supported chintan's work in a small way uh, so uh, but they have done so much work in the past one and a half months trying to reach several waste picker families uh, who are severely impacted by this lockdown because their Uh, their livelihood has been uh, severely uh, uh, impacted because of the lockdown uh, uh, in in delhi and in in rest of india as well um so we are very thankful to ira uh, and uh, other chintan team members who have joined us nisha pooja uh, nitu and balmukun uh, they are also on the call uh, we are thankful to all of you for the work that you are doing and also for spending this uh, time with us to uh, share the situation on the ground in delhi and also the team's efforts so far uh, in this really unprecedented and difficult time so uh, thank you all of you and uh, with that i will i want to pass on uh, 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 to ira and team to share their experience so far 
Ida, are you able to? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, we are able to hear. Yeah, yeah. thank okay. you, thank you for. Uh, yeah, so just before you, you start, uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, remind people to use the chat feature to ask questions to Ida and the team uh, for Chintan, and we'll ask the questions at the end. And also, feel please uh, do pledge your donations on the chat if you're if you want to do that, uh, and we'll share that uh, at the end of the call as well. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ida. Sorry for interrupting. Thank you. So, uh, namaste, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for giving us this chance to talk about the work that Chintan is doing in the wake of this pandemic. And uh, we're all trying to do uh, our best in the situation. But uh, let me just give you a basic timeline. We all know when the lockdown started. But, uh, you know, if you look a little bit before that, the first case in India was reported end of January, which was, I think, 30th of January. And Pep saw number of restrictions come in place. And by the time March had started, um, and we were in office till about like about two days after Holi, and we'd already seen people thin out from public transports. Uh, can you go back to the first slide, please? So a, a lot of um, our colleagues, uh, were, we were, we've started working from home. Um, a lot of restrictions were already in place. In fact, India had declared. Uh, COVID-19 as a crisis on 13th of March. So uh, lockdown didn't come as a surprise, but uh, as an aftermath, what happened uh, was something which we were not prepared for. So um, while this happened, um, a lot of road transport was uh, hit because of the lockdown. Uh, the essential items uh, all of a sudden started to disappear. Staples were not available. Uh, Russian disappeared and uh, just to put things in perspective of how difficult situation was uh, can you go to the next slide please yeah so uh, you know just to give you a bit of uh, data and the total population of Delhi is about uh, 30 million and if you add um, NCR, uh, that's another 16 million. So we are looking at a population of about 46 million people. That's a couple of million more than the total population of Canada. So that's the size of, uh, that. that's the amount of uh, people who live in Delhi NCR. And uh, Delhi itself has about 200,000 plus, 200, plus waste pickers uh, in the city. And almost 65 to 70% of them are uh, people who uh, do doorstep collection, pick up waste from municipal dumps, pick up waste from the roadside. So, uh, you know, when the lockdown was announced, uh, panic spread, a lot of uh, areas in the city stopped waste pickers from coming in their localities. So typically what happens is um, a waste picker would earn his living by retrieving material of any value, which could be paper, plastic, glass, metal, out of the waste that he collects, and then storing it and selling it to uh, further up the value chain. Now, when this happening, when the waste pickers were stopped from coming into a lot of RWAs, a lot of residential areas, they had no uh, way of making a living. Um, of course, on the other hand, supplies were already dwindling. Uh, there's no way to make money now and uh, these are not people who have uh, bank accounts or savings FDs, stock options they don't even have the option of let's say working from home on these things so uh, you know that that's one side of the problem uh, even on a good month a maybe speaker would make something around eight thousand to ten thousand rupees uh, in a month which is basically loosely translated to about 110 to 130 dollars in a month uh, so with that, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, if you can't, you're not making money on one hand and things are getting expensive. A lot of people were hoarding material at that point in time. So that's, that's the uh, background to the work that we started. That's the time when we started our fundraising campaign. So we were doing multiple things. Can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, we were doing multiple things already. One was, um, as Lakshmi mentioned, the education program, No Child in Trash, that we have. Uh, and this is early March before the restrictions came in place. Uh, we run about uh, 
23 uh, learning centers in 19 areas of Delhi. Most of, uh, all of these are in Basic communities, and these are children from these communities. So these kids were already talking to members of community on why hand washing is important, why is it important to wear masks, why is it important to cover your face, those kind of things. So we were already doing that work. Next slide, please. Before, uh, you know, even before the face masks were made compulsory uh, in the city, uh, teachers, we have, uh, from the same education program, we have about 70 uh, part-time teachers who work with us. And uh, they pulled in resources, whatever they had at home, uh, including uh, bed sheets to material, old dress material, what they could get from their neighbors. And they made about almost close to 5,000 masks which they gave out to people in their own communities because uh, masks were again uh, not available or what was available was extremely expensive at that time. Can you go to the next one please? But what was happening was as uh, you know as the background to this was that uh, food was not available. There was a problem in uh, buying, there was no money with people and what do you do? So our team had put together and we had just started our fundraising campaign, honestly. So we didn't have the resources to buy ration for everyone. So our team and uh, including everyone who's on the call, Nisha, Balmukun, Neetu, we guys all pulled in our resources and we were looking at people who were supporting uh, with the cooked meal. So uh, over a period of three weeks, our team had ensured that almost 2,600 meals per day we're reaching members of community in nine different areas. Uh, next, please. And this is actually part of the distribution team. Despite uh, all the restrictions that were in place, despite all the difficulties that we were facing, people were not willing to get out of their houses. And these are the people who actually uh, were out distributing material in uh, very densely populated communities every day. In fact, one of our team members, unfortunately, is also down with COVID. He's still uh, being treated, but uh, we're still working in the field. So, uh, can you go to the next one, please? So, this is just to show you a spread of the area that we've worked in. And uh, as you can see, um, we've reached out to almost every part of Delhi. Our work was not restricted to one geography. Uh, we've covered uh, almost 29 different areas which are spread from south to east to west to north. Um, next please. And from the time that we have started, uh, so this is, this is just to give you an idea of what we were dealing with. Can you go to the next one? Yeah. So this is just to give you an idea of uh, the kind of cues that we were facing, uh, the number of people who were, were trying to reach out to. Uh, and if you look at the right hand side picture, uh, the corner of the right hand side picture, on the background that's the Bhalaswa landfill. So these people don't live next to the landfill, they're actually living on the landfill. Uh, that's a team, uh, if you look at the image below, that's a team trying to put together uh, the kits for distribution. That's some of the distribution effort that we did. Uh, next please. Um, so, so far, uh, from the time we had started, um, we had a number of, a number of people who have given us, uh, you know, who have provided us with resources to make this possible. Uh, if, you, if you see a lot of pantans right in this picture, please don't be shocked, because that was given to us by uh, Coca-Cola Beverages, which is also a partner for us. So, other than the monetary uh, compensation that they did, they also gave us some uh, beverages to distribute. And uh, so far, we've distributed about uh, 2,000 kits, actually over 2,000 because the distribution is still happening. And between yesterday and today, uh, we've done almost 400 uh, more kits. So, so far, we've reached out to 14,000 individuals, which may sound like a small number, but uh, given the circumstances uh, and given the, given the problems that we had to face right from getting uh, movement passes to actually procuring the material because everyone was hoarding. We were treated as black marketeers by a lot of them. Uh, so, so and so forth, we've managed to uh, reach out to 2,000 more people, 2,000 people uh, as of right now. 
You can go to the next one, please. Uh, this is one of the stories that we uh, recently uh, discovered. Um, this is a girl called Bucky. She's, I think, uh, 22 years old. Uh, these are her twins and uh, they're 10 months old. So when our team uh, met her, she was feeding her kids uh, sugar solution for the last few days because they'd run out of food and uh, they had no, nothing to feed even the kids. So uh, baby food is a luxury for them. And uh, so when we uh, asked her if you'd like Terelac or one of those baby formulas, um, so she said, no, we don't use those things. So what we're giving to them is basically milk powder so that they can feed these children. And in the background of the image, if you can see, that's actually where she lives. And uh, these people are still storing uh, waste, which they get from the landfill, uh, to sell at a future date possible when the market picks up and the restrictions are low, um, wherever the opportunity arrives. Can we go to the next one, please? Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, and I promise this is my, uh, just go to the last one. The one. Oh. The one oh, before the. Uh, sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Is this one? No. Um, so up, up, up. Yeah, this. The one after this. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, so those of you who understand financial markets um, and are familiar with the term futures, uh, basically uh, it means you buy something right now and uh, keep it with you for a few weeks uh, when the value picks up. This is exactly what these people are doing right now, but they're trying to uh, forage for waste and food. So whatever they can get out of this dump, uh, they will store it for weeks and uh, when the markets open, they will try and sell it to uh, the junk dealers and dealers who are in and around their locality. So this is how bad the situation is. This image is uh, pretty recent actually and was shared with us uh, by someone. And um, these people are also looking for uh, food in this. So, uh, because the waste in Delhi is now being, uh, not being segregated and it's being sent directly to the landfills. So, uh, you can see what's happening already. So, I'm not going to take much time, but I would just like to make an appeal here and say that, you know, uh, we're in day 46 of lockdown. The first round of ration that we provided is already sort of running out. And, uh, you know, there are a lot many people like Bubbly, there are a lot many people that we don't know of who need our help. So, uh, you know, uh, help us reach out to as many people as possible. Thank you very much. If you guys have any other questions, whatever. Thank you, Thank you so much, Ira. Uh, uh, yeah, before we go on to questions, I would like to invite Arvinda to uh, come in here and talk about the Sure. Well, you know, I, I have to also, um, you know, really thank you so much, uh, Ira Ji. Um, I, I believe Nisha, uh, Pooja and Balmukund also have joined the call, um, perhaps to answer questions or simply to share some time with us in the midst of, of, of this hectic time. I mean, it's, sometimes it's enough to make you dizzy just reading the news from afar and, you know, in the midst of all of this, <sighs> something that is immensely reassuring to us is to know that an organization like Chintan is there and that we can directly support your work. And it, it's, it's really a relief to us to know that even though, um, even though we're not there in person, we can strengthen the hands of people like you who are there. And uh, aid is working um, with uh, 30 partners <coughs> like Chintan across uh, 18 states in India with the continuing lockdown, uh, people who perhaps could have managed in the first couple of weeks have also uh, run out of essential supplies, rations, um, even the, you know, the rest of the food, not just the grain, but even the oil or the, um, you know, vegetables to have actually have a proper meal, uh, cooking fuel, hygiene supplies, everything um, is now uh, in that, in that, um, in that category of essential and critical supplies that, that have to be supplied 
uh, you know, by organizations like Chintan and our partners. But at the same time, the health need is also uh, rising. We, people, we are, uh, aid is also providing um, protective equipment to frontline workers, including health workers, Anganwadi workers, uh, sanitation, and uh, the higher grade uh, masks for the actual medical workers um, involved in, in, in areas where the COVID cases are on the rise. We are also trying to mobilize support for families who are um, affected by COVID-19. Um, and, and so you can see some of the estimates that our partners have given us as to what it would take to support, um, to support people in, in, to meet these various needs. So I'd like to put these um, you know, fundraising numbers before you. I know many of you on this call have uh, been supporting aid regularly, have supported at least once during this time of crisis. But uh, if you can, if you are in a position to do so, I would really appeal to people today. If, if you are in a position to contribute today, we give you our pledge that we will ensure that essential supplies and health support will reach people in need at the last mile. So as Subhayan said, if you can, if you can um, make a pledge uh, in the chat window, uh, we'll be uh, tallying that and announcing the total that we uh, reach by the end of this call. We'll also be uh, taking some questions uh, as we go along. I see a couple of questions are already there in the chat window. So, um, and, I, and I know that we have a special message from uh, a, a gentleman from one of the communities engaged in waste picking. So Subhayan, uh, would you please uh, give us a chance? And, and before that, I also have to say that anybody, uh, oh my goodness, I, I have to appreciate Madhu Ramachandran who has just pledged $500 to start off our, our pledge drive today. That is, a, that is a very good start. And I um, would like to um, give everybody an additional incentive for pledging today. Today is uh, the birthday of a very special aid volunteer who has been moderating this call, Subhayan, at the University of Maryland. We don't know how old he is today, but he's a little older than he was uh, yesterday. So I um, hope all of you will wish will join us in wishing a happy birthday to Subhayan and uh, putting putting your pledge behind those birthday wishes. All right, Subhayan, let's uh, let's have a message from Delhi. Thank you so much, Aravinda. Uh, one second. Sound, yeah. Subhayan? Hello? Uh, Subhayan, Professor I'm, Bhagat is asking you something. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, play the audio, Professor Bhagat. Yes. जो पारिया बालक आया खन जी ले ले आकिन आया इसाना कालावन जावाओ जी ले ले आकिन जी के ए पाकलाया ना जब हो जाबा असाते बाजे बाटे आकिन अलाड़ा कना बूता रुआ के भीड़ वाला की आजा है जी के ए ये समझावाया दा Mia, <laughs> 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 